Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and today I'm going to be talking about the 10 children's books you must see before you die. Now of course the title comes with a bit of a grain of salt. I'm going to be talking about some of the most extraordinary picture book illustrators that ever did live. This is a biased list, one that I put together, um, though I do feel like I am quite the expert in children's books, book illustrations, illustrators. This is an area of expertise for me, and so I think I have a wonderful, wonderful list to share with you. If you have an illustrator that I must check out, please please leave that in a comment down below. I love uh, looking for new illustrators, looking at new illustrators, discovering new illustrators to me. And uh, again, this is um, a subject of great passion for me, of um, great joy, and one that I have been developing and learning more about through many, like for many, 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 many years. If you are new to my channel and you also love picture books, illustrations, beautiful art, I would really encourage you to subscribe and stick around. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. All of these illustrators, you yourself can look at any of their books. I'm just showing you what I have in my possession right now, whether it be from the library or my own collection. So the first illustrator is Chris Van Alsberg, and I have The Widow's Broom and The Garden of Abdul Gahazi. You might also actually know him more for the book Jumanji or The Polar Express. I think those are two of his more famous and notable works. What is really fascinating about his style is that it is photorealistic. There is a photorealism with his work, meaning that you could almost be tricked into thinking that his uh, art is actually uh, that of a photograph. I mean, it looks that realistic. There is such a fine point to detail with his works. I love also his storytelling style, which is really not what this video is about, but there's always a bit of a cheekiness, a cleverness, a little bit of a twist to his books. I feel like he has a real knack for storytelling along with his just absolutely incredible art. And what's interesting is that some of his books, like Jumanji, if you think about it, um, it has to do with this uh, magical realistic element. And with that photorealistic style, it almost tricks your brain into thinking that what you were seeing is real. So the you know rhinoceroses uh, running through a house and destroying a house, or like the example would be for the widow's broom, a broom that is actually magically sweeping the floor by itself. It almost tricks you into thinking that what you were seeing is real, which only adds to the magic of his books. It is just an incredible, I mean, he himself is an incredible illustrator and um, I really clearly love his books. The art tools that he works with is uh, pencil and charcoal. They are, they give off a very black and white quality to his books. Like there's only two tones and then there's, or two colors, and then there's depth to those tones. Um, but it, what it does is that it just is, it almost adds this mesmerizing quality to his work. Clearly, I am passionate about Chris Van Allsburg, and I would highly encourage you to check out any of his works because each one of them is incredibly impressive. The next illustrator is Graham Bass. I own his book, Animalia, which is an alphabet book. And this book in particular has a very whimsical style to it. His art is bananas. It is colorful and large and totally off the rails, which I hope you are seeing in the illustrations that I'm showing you as I'm flipping through the book. There is, there is a sense that he's not afraid of color and not afraid to just put in almost like this collage style art in the books. It's nonsensical and in that way it's almost like has this playful quality to it. His books are one of the books that my children and I could just sit there and look at the illustrations for hours because of just how detail oriented and sort of how completely imaginative his work is. 
it is truly a treat to sit there and look at bases, illustrations, and um, spend time with his work. Just absolutely worth it. The next illustrator is one of my personal favorites, and it is Virginia Lee Burton. I have Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel, but she has just her in, entire body of work is absolute perfection, which is how I've heard her art technique described in that she would have a, just an, a ton of preliminary drawings before trying to execute the final piece. And she was a real perfectionist with her work. She came up with her own typography, which is displayed on the front of this book. She's most known for her anthropomorphized vehicles. She has an anthropomorphized train, an anthropomorphized um, steam shovel, anthropomorphized house, and she tends to use those as central characters for her book, for her books. What I love is that she uses, she has a whole sense of the page. She has beautiful balance between the white space and the space that she uses for her illustrations. And there's a real attention to detail, the way that the typography works on the page with the illustrations. It seems that she has not left anything to chance, anything that, there's nothing that is not thought through with her, with her illustrations and with her books. The stories are delightful and she is one that I really, really think would enrich any child's reading life and is one that is wonderful on a revisit, especially as an adult. This list would not be complete if it wasn't for Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter has, you know, the tale, this is the tale of Benjamin Bunny, but she has a, a myriad of other illustrative books and they're all done in a very similar style. So any one of her books will work in terms of enriching your life by looking at gorgeous illustrations. Her illustrative style is that of ink with a lightly done watercolor and it gives this very gorgeous washed out technique um, in that the, the darks on the page are not super, super dark, but this really sort of lovely light, almost pastel -y type greens and browns and oranges and blues. She has a real sense of setting and a sense of giving charm to the books. Her tales often center around little animals, little creatures that are in gardens. The garden is almost in its end and of itself a character on its own, especially the way that she illustrates it with such care. And each of the characters are dressed up in these absolutely delightful little outfits. They are so stinking cute. So there's a sense of whimsy to each of her books and the illustrations are immediately spottable. You know, you can immediately identify a, Be a Beatrix Potter book because of the way that she has honed in on dressing up her characters and the light washes of color that she puts in every single book of hers. But really, every book is just such a delight to look at. There is a sense of perfection on the page with each one of her illustrations. Next up, I have Marcia Brown. She, I have the book Once a Mouse, and she is an incredible artist. She is not a one-trick pony, which is probably why she has won the Caldecott no less than three times. She is most known for this book, Once and Mouse, but also her book Cinderella and Stone Soup, although she has quite a backlist out there. She has perfected multiple techniques um, because she does woodcuts, uh, collages, pen and ink drawings, watercolor, and even more. She has developed so many artistic um, styles and used so many different artistic techniques in her work, and yet her illustrations are identifiable. She definitely has a point of view that she brings to every work of hers, 
And I am also, I cannot, you know, I could go on and on, but another one of her things that I really appreciate is her sense of color. Um, every book has this richness and depth of color that explodes off the page. I mean, it is just incredible. If you can't tell, I love me some Marcia Brown and she is just one of those illustrators that I hope never goes away, never fades in our consciousness because her illustrations are worth looking at and worth remembering. This would not be a video of mine if I didn't mention this illustrator because I have done a whole video on him, which I will leave linked down below. And it is none other than Edward Gorey. Um, and this is his Ghastly Crumb Tinies. Um, this is an ABC Darien book, a book about the alphabet where he goes through each letter and he has a very dark and gothic style, but that is something that I love about him. He uses um, pen and ink with his illustrations. He tends to work on a very tiny scale. And so I would actually recommend if you do pick up one of his books to be careful about any of his illustrations that are blown up because it tends to lose some of that the quality that really adds the magic to his illustrations. He was really obsessed with Edwardian and Victorian styles. And so a lot of times his characters are dressed up in Victorian and Edwardian dress. And there is definitely a gothicness to his books, which I absolutely love. I um, I just think that there is something magical and interesting and um, provocative about his illustrations. It's like you all you kind of grimace at some of the things that he's writing about, but then you also can't look away because it is just so good. If you cannot tell, I have a huge passion for Edward Gorey. I just think that he was a brilliant illustrator and one to to definitely take a look at if you are unfamiliar with his style of art. Probably a name that is not a surprise to be on this list, but it is Maurice Sendak. Now, interestingly, I don't own Where the Wild Things Are, which is of course his most notable and most famous work, which I will not disagree that it is wonderful. However, I would implore you to look at his other things, his other illustrated books, because I have the book Outside Over There, and this is a really odd little book. It seems to be very much inspired by the Victorian, I, I was like, I think he was inspired by the Rossettis, because it has this nod to goblin lore. The goblins come in, they sneak into the window of a, of a room, and while the older sister, I believe her name is Ida. Yes, it is Ida. So when Ida is not looking, when Ida is not paying attention, these goblins come in and they steal her baby sister away and take her off to a magical world. This to me very feels very much like Hans Christian Andersen or even the Brothers Grimm, but it really reminded me of the poet by Chris or the poem by Christina Rossetti, Goblin Market, although the storyline is a little bit different. It also doesn't help, or maybe it adds to my idea that this is very Victorian inspired because of the way he's dressed his characters, because of this sense of like romanticism in the artistry itself. So I have a hunch that he was very inspired by the Victorians, perhaps the Rossettis themselves. But this is a book that is so impeccably and wonderfully illustrated. I also have the book, which is part of a series, Little Bear, but it is, I believe, the second book in this series, Father Comes Home. This is also illustrated by Maurice Sendak. And this is a collaboration with the author Elsie Holmlud Minarek. And this displays yet just another illustrative style that he is really good at. It is these anthropomorphized bears that are all dressed up and looking quite cute. And it has these beautiful washes of color, mostly blues and oranges. And it is just also yet another uh, facet to Maurice Sendak's talent. 
so good, so beautiful, such a delight to look at and to read. And um, if I can encourage you to just pick up one of his books, even if it is Where the Wild Things Are, which again is an incredible book, um, I would encourage you to do so because it is a delight to look at. Next up, I have the illustrator Elsa Beskow, and this is Children of the Forest. I read about this book in one of those anthologies, the 1001 books you must read before you die, or my version was the 1001 children's books you must read before you grow up, which at one point on my channel I said I would read all of those books, and I've definitely backed away from that idea. It was when my channel was in its early days, and I didn't know what this channel would mean to me. And so though I backed away from that, um, from that challenge, I have now really used those books what they're meant for what they're meant for, which is to guide my purchasing to help me discover new authors and illustrators. And through that book, I actually found Children of the Forest by Elsa Baskow, which I had longed for, I had desired to purchase. I had um, just in my heart wanted so badly for so long. And then I finally purchased it because my library didn't own it and it was not a disappointment. It is just done. It is this beautiful um, nod to nature, to the seasons, and to little children. It, like, uh, I mean, her illustrations are just so stinking charming. And from, from what I've learned now about Elsa Beskow is that she very much uses this kind of illustrative style, the marriage between the celebration of childhood and this sort of innocence of childhood and uh, marrying that with the natural world and a celebration of the natural world and the colors that come up in nature. Again, she dresses her characters in very cute dress. It is like just, oh, it's so adorable. I love it so much. And, um, and her books are definitely worth a looking at. We are nearing the end of this list, which really bums me out. But here I have David Weisner's Flotsam. Now, anything by David Weisner is going to be absolutely mind blowing. When I first saw his work, I was so drawn in by his photorealistic style, but it is married with like an absolutely bananas off the rails <laughs> kind of illustration, imagination. It is like things floating. It's like Sal Salvador Dali in a children's book, if I could, you know, you know, kind of reference the great. But I mean, David Weisner is just such an imaginative artist. He is not afraid of color. He's got this real sense of storytelling in his bananas, crazy, amazing, incredible art. And it is a total delight to read. Again, it's almost like this, it's, it's like surrealism in a picture book. It's such a strange experience, but one that I feel like every person on this planet will enjoy and will just get something out of because it is so incredible. The last book is really a, a personal favorite of mine, though I do think that it is an incredibly illustrated book. And a lot of this duo's illustrations were very, very beautiful and continue to be. Um, but this book I saw as an adult and it made me realize how much I was enamored with children's picture books and the art in children's picture books. And it wouldn't be, with without this book, I don't really know where I would, would be in terms of me and children's book illustrations. Um, but it is King Big Goods in the Bathtub and it is by Don and Audrey Wood. Audrey Wood is the uh, writer and Don Wood is the illustrator. And this tells the story of a king that is in the bath and he won't get out and they don't know what to do. And actually that's part of the the um, refrain in the book. It's, we, uh, you know, who knows what to do? Who knows what to do? Um, and I love the colors in this book. I love that you see the sunrise and then the sunset and the way that the washes of the sun and at the different parts of the day really influence the colors in the story. I love the costumes in this story. It's, you know, it's very much like over the top bananas. 
um, completely unrealistic costumes and I love the playfulness of the king being in the bath and that nobody knows how to get him out and so they do these really kind of bananas things in the bath they go fishing in the bath they have a, a feast in the bath they have a dance in the bath and everyone else is miserable except for the king who's having this jolly good time being in the bath and then at the end there's a little bit of a twist of how he gets out of the bath <laughs> and I just I love it I, I love its playfulness but I also love the playfulness that's in the art um, it's one of those books that I've sat around with my children looking at the pages for you know minutes at a time and we we're just looking at the details that Don Wood put into the illustrations um, and there's just this real sense of understanding how to paint which I believe this is a painted work um, how to paint light and how to capture a real whimsy in the way that light hits certain things um, but not losing the playfulness of life in this book. I love it so much. I have such a passion for it but again his other other books as this duo there's this one called I think Pigs and there's The Napping House and with all of the books there's a sense of playfulness and joy in life in in the works. And isn't that what art is supposed to do? It's supposed to bring us uh, delight. It's supposed to bring us awe and joy and love and a sense that we are just so grateful to be alive. That's what it does for me. Um, and I was, I'm just so glad to have shared these 10 illustrators with you. I hope that you all pick one up and enjoy art for its own sake. Um, being put in uh, in a in a position where it's supposed to delight and enjoy make make children enjoy it really and um, I just hope that you yourself pick this up and look at it and really just enjoy it for what it is because you know I really think the best artists out there they know that parents are sitting there with their children looking at these books and so they're not just for children they're for us as well and and I, I just think that the ten illustrators that I have highlighted for you really had a sense of that. They really understood that in their work and the amount of love and creativity and work that are poured into each one of these books is definitely um, prevalent throughout. Um, anyways, thank you so much for letting me share. I really appreciate it. Thank you for letting me just yammer on about this, something that I'm really passionate about. about. And um, yeah, I hope you will all come back for the next video. I don't know how to end this, but yeah, I will see you all in my next one. Bye.